So, unfortunately, because I am a PhD MD, it's a bad idea to tick me off. And so by the time I was investigating the research on this virus, I started investigating where it came from. Bad move if you get a lot of money flow and you publish papers and you get patents for things because I will undoubtedly find that. It may take me a while, but I guarantee you I'm a persistent little guy. <clears throat> Oh, there's the book. That's shameful advertising, but I don't know any other way to do it. This, by the way, has been submitted into evidence to the International Criminal Court. <clears throat> so, the spike protein that you all hear about has three very interesting components, unlike any other spike protein we've seen on coronaviruses. And the first one is the HIV glycoprotein-120 attachment. Turns out that during the 1990s, because I was doing my research, I was paralleling theirs, which made me a threat. <clears throat> because the same 5HC, uh, neuron 5C, receptor is the place that the glycoprotein-120 attaches. And now she's only quite honestly admitted she put this in there. And it turns out that it's a great way to attach, because if you think the ACE2 receptor is the only thing involved, you would be sadly wrong. So it attaches to the sialic receptor, it goes to the H2, it goes into ACE2, then the TMPRSS2, which is transmembrane protein series 2, it then goes into the furin cleavage site, and then it goes into the neurofilin 1. So it's a little bit more complicated than just H2, but that's good because clindamycin actually works on TMPRSS2. <clears throat> Proline, arginine, arginine, alanine. Those are four amino acids. Every amino acid has three nucleotide bases, so that's 12. Mutations occur one at a time. Sickle cell anemia is a single one base pair, and it made a significant difference, right? This is 12, and the furin cleavage site is critical to getting this thing to be taken into a cell. Huh. And then when, like stepping on a box, if you do enough things to the box, it will change the shape of the box. So this glycoprotein-120 and the PRA insert changes the appearance of the spike protein. So at the very top of the spike protein, where it's called the regional binding domain, acts like a prion. <clears throat> and a prion is not a good thing. But glycoprotein-120 is also a prion. So let's look at glycoprotein-120. That little chart up there that looks really confusing, all those red arrows, <clears throat> that's Luc Montagnier. <clears throat> Luc Montagnier is one of the three people who submitted affidavits to the ICC case. He discovered HIV. All those arrows are HIV inserts into this virus. <clears throat> Remember I said PRA is 12? There's 1,770, if I remember correctly, inserts that are either HIV or SIV, which is simian or eight. IV. Okay? <clears throat> hmm. <clears throat> wow. Yep. <clears throat> and so there's the attachment site that I point out. My work that got me in just a bunch of trouble. I'm a bad guy. <clears throat> I'm a convicted felon, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, I am. Because I took on Big Pharma and the judge said the jury didn't need to know the whole truth and the wool could be pulled over their eyes. So if you go to the website, you'll see probably 30 documents where the government showed that I billed exactly correctly and that I probably actually underbilled according to the AMA and I guess that's a crime. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> that's okay. They just trained me well. I've been watching them. They've been watching me. It's been fun. <clears throat> Don't do that to someone who's a Viking in a research Just as a thought. So, we know that the glycoprotein-120 causes what's, what's called spongiform encephalopathy. It means the brain looks like a sponge, right? And all those white areas up there in A and B, that's spongiform encephalopathy. All the green parts, those are nerve cells. So E is fine and B is when the viruses are introduced or glycoprotein-120 is introduced. Those, those nerve cells are gone, <clears throat> okay? You call that mad cow disease. Another prion disease is called Alzheimer's. 
BRRA. We're going to fly through here. Those are all the coronaviruses that exist on planet Earth, and this is the only one that has the PRRA insert, and it's in the S1 component, which is the stable part of the spike protein. And <clears throat> who owns, well, and it's critical for getting into the cells, that purin cleavage site is called purin cleavage, PRRA. And who owns the patent for inserting those? That's it, the US government. <clears throat> So the U.S. government owns the patent for inserting what's found in this virus, but not in any other coronavirus on planet Earth. <clears throat> Prion-like domain at the very top, resulting from the Bach's deformity. Here you go, you can see at the very top there are two animal studies. The first one was the humanized mice that you've all heard about. And what did that do? <clears throat> you see that little square? That's an enlargement of the brain and it looks like a sponge. These animals, 95% died within two weeks. That's a year and a half for you and me. <clears throat> okay. In rhesus macaques, they sacrificed the animals at five to six weeks. They found in these areas of the brain, which are critical to your survival, this, and the Lewy bodies that you see up there, those brown things, that's Alzheimer's disease, produced in animal models closest to humans who didn't have the disease before they got this transmitted to them. Brief look at gain of function history. These are the players involved. You'll notice many of them. That's Anthony Fauci, uh, Peter Dazak, Ralph Barrick next to him, and under him, Xi Zeng Li. And by the way, you don't put a level four virology lab in the middle of a city. We put those out away from the people so that when we have a problem, like I'm doing it, it, it you, you don't find out about it. It's not that it doesn't get spread, it's just that you don't hear about it. <clears throat> okay. So. There's a whole bunch of things here, and I know the time is passing on, so I'm going to try and get through all of this. You can see that back in 1999, Health and Human Services started funding for this. In 2000, Barrick began successfully making new viruses using what's called complementary DNA. That's an experimental technique. In 2002, they got a patent paid for by NIH. Yep, that's Fauci and Collins. <clears throat> Xi Zeng Li admits it. In 2002, that she put pseudovirus HIV glycoprotein 120 in. Barrick in 2003 gets uh, another grant for altering coronaviruses. By the way, University of Iowa, Texas, Galveston, Wisconsin, you name it. There's a whole host of universities in this country that have been doing gain of function research that you've been paying for. Thank you. <clears throat> Chinese researchers in 2006 published a paper that I did an interview with the other day. The first notation of SARS-CoV-2 is in 2006 in a published research paper where they put together HIV, hepatitis C virus, SARS-CoV-1, and SARS-CoV-2. They actually define them this way in the paper. And I think Anthony Fauci is listening to me because prior to me talking about SARS-CoV as being SARS-CoV-1, because, you know, if you have SARS-CoV-2, wouldn't it make sense? The first one's SARS-CoV-1. <clears throat> okay. When he was being uh, testifying to Senator Dr. Rand Paul, used the term SARS-CoV-1, and that's the only time I've heard him use it. So thanks, Anthony, for listening. <clears throat> um, 2007, the grant says, check on international travel if you think you have a pandemic. Now the guy in charge of NIAID ought to be aware of a study paid for in the United States in 2007, but as that memory reflects for me, back in the early part of 2020 when the president asked Anthony Fauci whether we should shut down travel, his response was no. <clears throat> Even though the research said, hell yes. Okay? Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, in 2011, we had a little disaster with viruses leaking out that were very contagious out of the University of Wisconsin in the Netherlands because they were playing gain of function research with an influenza virus <coughs> that got out. <coughs> Sorry. 2013 MERS, which is also coronavirus, 30 to 40 percent mortality, very effective. They started playing around with that. In 2013, Barrick and a group of Chinese scientists admit to putting HKU4 spike protein, which is an extremely effective form of the spike protein that they were playing around with. <clears throat> 2014, uh, NIH had a little problem with uh, smallpox leaking out, 
And the Obama administration finally decided, thanks to scientists saying uh, we need to shut this down, temporarily shut down gain of function. Although, interestingly enough, research money seemed to make its way out of the federal government to Peter Dazak at EcoHealth. <coughs> I think Anthony Fauci was, was in charge of those things. <clears throat> Here is a very interesting one because when you ask a question point blank that says, does the United States government, has it funded any research on coronaviruses, on spike protein? That's the patent for it. <clears throat> that patent came after it was done and it's paid for by NIH and IAID. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Obviously, clearing my throat, not a good thing. Um, all right, so you can see if you're sitting before Congress and you're being asked by a senator under oath, have you done this? You shouldn't have these things floating around where people like me can find them. <clears throat> Uh, further engineering of HKU-4 in 2015. Uh, in 2015, they actually said they could make a more infectious, virulent, nasty virus. I mean, they just were bold about it. And journalists caught it. And the 2016 paper that everybody is, is excited because they found because the spike protein of one virus got merged to the backbone of another one, that's as far as everybody read, right? But if you're like me and you go to the supplements, you find out you see every one of those little five inserts on the bottom. Those are five additional specific nucleotide bases that were inserted by these rocket scientists. And as a physicist, rocket science is the dumb part of the field. So, <laughs> <laughs> And one's in the envelope, which is critical for infection. Ah, jeez, okay. Um, here's one that you didn't want to know about, because in 2016, they found open reading frame 10. An open reading frame 10, if you put it into a coronavirus, will keep the coronavirus. It'll blunt your immune system so that you cannot make interferon to interfere with the virus. Mm. Same people, same funding, same folks. <clears throat> Every time somebody says, what do you think is going to happen next, I just go. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> 2017, gain of function, it got lifted. 2018, Shi Zheng Li reported on some of her bat studies. That data has been stripped from the internet. 2019, Wuhan Virology stripped their data bank. <laughs> I have part of it. Uh, and then the municipal group in, 20, in, in December deleted their data too. All right, so how much money? Well, more than $61 million, more than half of which came from the Department of Defense. By the way, the same people who offered me a job this year as a physicist to do imaging on infectious disease funded by NIAID. I, why they would send me a request, two of them, for me to know if I want that job. It's just, read the papers, I'm not the guy you want to be doing this for. <clears throat> They also provided a policy advisor, former commander at Fort Detrick, David Franz, to Peter Daszak at EcoHealth. In other words, how do you do this? Money and how do you do it? I just love watching her expressions <clears throat> when you see a journalist go, <laughs> um, bad idea. Yeah. <clears throat> And this one, I just have to play. This is the longest one, but it has to be done. Do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are entire, entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute. Do they fund Dr. Wrong? Barrick? We do not fund... Do you fund gain, Dr. Barrick's gain-of-function research? D Dr. Barrick does not do gain-of-function research, and if it is, it's according to the guidelines, and it is being conducted in North Carolina. 
not you don't think it's turning a bat virus spike protein that he got from the Wuhan Institute into the soil. I like the guy behind him. <laughs> that is not a minority. <clears throat> At least 200 scientists have signed a statement from the Cambridge Working Group saying that it is going to function. Well, it is not. And if you look at the grants, and you look at the uh, progress reports, it is not gain of function, despite the fact that people tweet that. So do you still support it? sending money to the Wuhan Virology Institute? We do not send money now to the Wuhan yeah. Virology Institute. We support Institute. sending money. We did, under your tutelage. We were sending it through EcoHealth. It was a sub-agency right. and a sub-grant. Do you support the money from NIH that was going to the Wuhan Institute? Let me explain to you why that was done. The SARS-CoV-1 originated in bats in China. It would have been irresponsible of us if we did not investigate the bat viruses and the serology to see who might have been or, infected. Or perhaps it would be possible to send it to the Chinese government that we may not be able to trust with this uh, knowledge and with this uh, incredibly dangerous viruses. Government scientists like yourself who favor gain of function research. I don't favor gain of function <laughs> research in China. You are saying things that are not correct. Government defenders of gain of function, such as yourself. That's, that's, that's not right. I mean, I like, I like the video, but um, it's like he buried himself so many times and then kept sidestepping that it's. Right. I, I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Anthony Fauci, anytime, any place, anywhere you wanted to be. So I'm just a dumb attorney for the last eight or nine years. I'm not sure exactly what commits perjury, but I think lying under a 